Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm gonna be finally wrapping up the fuel system in the car. Um, the last video I made, I did mention that I wanted to run a fuel cell in the car. I just didn't know which one to get. So uh, I finally pulled the trigger on a 20 gallon Aeromoto fuel cell that's internally baffled and has an internal fuel pump. Um, should be a lot better than the stock system. Um, so there's obviously a few things I need to do. I need to build a cage around it so I can mount it into the car and then obviously plumb it up. So on the Jags, this is your feed line and this is your return line. Um, on the fuel pump, or I'm sorry, the fuel cell, this is your feed line and that's your return. And then you have two vents at the top. I think what I'm gonna do is cap off uh, that side and let it vent from the left side. And then obviously run uh, the feed to the feed and then the return to the return. So that all being said, I'm gonna push you guys up on time lapse. Get to work. Hey, what's up guys? So it's a new day. I want to show you guys what I came up with. So this is actually attempt number two. Um, the first attempt it goes to plan just because I, I guess I made the, I guess the tolerances too close. Um, what I've uh, found out is that this tank isn't uh, perfectly square everywhere. What I mean by that, I measured 24 inches long and then 20 inches wide. Um, what problems I came into is that the welds got in the way and then uh, in some parts, the tank kind of bows out ever so slightly. Um, and so what I did with this one, I uh, went over, I think it was a, a quarter of an inch or it might've been an eighth of an inch, one of those two. And uh, now it slides in perfectly. Um, these bars, they come off, they're just held in with uh, bolts up top. And then at the bottom here, I got some padding that way it isn't, uh, vibrations doesn't wear into the tank at all, as well as padding on top of here. Um, so these sides all the way around, the bars that go up, they don't come in contact with the tank at all. There's about an eighth inch of a gap, um, which is perfect. And then both the top bar and the bottom bars there, uh, clamp the, I guess to clamp, uh, the fuel cell down into the car. Um, this is also perfect because uh, I need to have the tank sit up just ever so slowly up front, probably inch, inch and a half, because naturally the, the fuel tank sits forward a little bit um, with the ride height and whatnot. So uh, what I, I think I'm going to do is put some spacers up top, and then when I go to bolt it in into the car, um, just put them in, and then that way the tank sits level, and uh, I shouldn't have problems with that. So I'm going to put this in the car and uh, show you guys what it looks like. All right, this is it installed in the car. Really happy with the way this turned out. Uh, there might be a version three of the the cage just because some of these welds, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I haven't welded since high school, but uh, I think this will do the job just fine. Uh, now though, all there is left to do is uh, plumb it up. I am using Vibrant Performance uh, line and fittings. Um, so on the return in the feed lines, and I don't know if this is correct, but I mean, they, they thread it in. So um, I guess it is, but I'm using a AN line dash eight to dash six, six to five, because that is what I found to work. AN dash five fits in that port there. And then uh, on the return, it's a dash eight to dash six. All these lines on this uh, cell are dash eight. So obviously dash eight to dash eight, and then obviously return dash eight, dash eight. And as well as uh, all the vent lines that are dash eight as well. So I will uh, put you guys up with time lapse and uh, make some lines.
All right guys, so here it is installed and plumbed up. So we did just cycle the pump a few times and there was two leaks at the base of this fitting here and at the base of the return line here. Um, I did put a little bit of thread sealer on it and uh, that stopped the leak. Um, also, I just wanted to show you guys the overall fitment of the cage. So down here, it doesn't interfere with that uh, bracket at all for the for the battery tray. Um, I don't think that's something I'll be able to finish in this video. Um, I plan on just uh, putting a piece of aluminum here and uh, that's where the battery will sit. Um, as the fittings go, um, before <laughs> I was just trying to crank down the uh, actual fitting to the AN line. Um, and uh, there's plenty of YouTube videos on YouTube on how to install fitting to a line, but uh, they were saying use lubricant and then I didn't have any WD-40 or anything like that. So I just used uh, engine oil, a little bit of that, and uh, that made it at least five times easier to install. But uh, everything worked out really well. Um, again, using Vibrant Performance uh, line in fittings. I'm going to a, a Summit filter and obviously into the car. And this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, 290s and, I don't know, like three foot of line. But uh, can't start it tonight, unfortunately. So tomorrow I'll have to show you guys this thing, um, how quiet the, the, the pump is and everything. You actually probably won't even hear it over the exhaust, but um, overall really happy that there's uh, no more leaks other than those two that we addressed. And uh, yeah, so I will see you guys tomorrow for the startup. All right guys, so we're gonna get right into it. Uh, I got everything buttoned up last night. Uh, this is not the final battery position, um, nor the final battery. I wanna run a lithium ion battery in that same spot just because it takes up quite a bit of real estate. And that thing weighs a ton. In addition, that battery is pretty much flat, uh, hence the uh, battery jumper. Um, but go ahead and kick on the, the fuel pump. So quiet. Now go ahead and start it. Right, guys well everything is installed and uh she runs which is a huge sigh of relief um i didn't mention i have everything buttoned up um well that is not the case looking at this now i think i need to do a little bit of wire management and then also i really wanted to redo those uh, battery cables just because they're getting really stiff and brittle and uh i would really like a new one especially with the new uh, lithium ba battery that's going to be installed here soon but uh i know this is a question that's going to be uh coming up in the comment section how much did this all cost um, in total, it was around 1500 bucks. Um, the indirect cost for me, because I didn't have a welder or anything like that, was quite a bit more. So I had to go out and buy some uh, argon and a welder, but uh, it was a cool project. And uh, now I have a welder for other pro projects to do in the car. So that is gonna be good. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking in this video. So I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here. Um, Thank you guys as always for watching the videos. Um, please like, share, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.